Now, of course, we do know that uh, Zambia has been a very successful story in terms of uh, improving its agricultural sector. And this certainly, of course, is going to give that market a boost. Just give us a sense of what difference this will make in terms of improving farming in Zambia. Uh, thank you. Good afternoon and thank you for having me. Well, I think for a long time, um, this is not just in Zambia, but I think pretty much across the continent and in some parts of the world, governments tend to get involved in the food market because uh, that's where most of the employment is, especially for the informal sector. Mm. Now, uh, the side effect of that involvement of governments has been government ultimately becoming um, if you like, the risk hedging mechanism. Mm. And um, this innovative, I think, initiative, uh, first and foremost, is an exhibition of how two markets in two different countries can work together in the region to foster trade. Then also, uh, it allows, I think, the Zambian market in particular to use or access through the JSC, the global market. Mm. So JSC becomes a window I think for Zambian grain to the rest of the world. Yeah. Then also it facilitates, I think, even from the local point of view, the various actors to now move towards a market-driven um, price risk hedging mechanism yeah. using uh, instruments that are tried and tested. Yeah, you did say that governments were taking most of the risk before. We do know that uh, African governments tend to like uh, controlling the food sector from a, a food security perspective. But we also know, of course, that they have not been very effective in terms of managing that risk. Now, just how much appetite do you think, though, there is out there in terms of the farming community to try and use these instruments to get their grain onto the oil market, as you say, and also have their prices in part determined by world trends? I, I, I think... Uh for the story of Zambia is, is clear for most people that look at this market. Uh, we've tried, I think, the government way for the last 16 years or so. Mm. And um, I think colossal sums of uh, taxpayers' funds have been used in a very inefficient manner. And I think even the local government, I think, is beginning to realize that this is not sustainable. Mm. Just to give you a quick example, in 2011, you know, we spent something close to 600 million U.S. in uh, government itself being the market for mm. one specific commodity, maize grain. Mm. And this clearly can't go on forever. And, and on the other hand, we have a budding private sector that is re uh, ready to position itself um, to look at these various grains, you know, as a business opportunity. Mm. And uh, one key issue is that you know, despite our low productivity as a country, we still have, I think, quite low productivity despite the good strides in production. Yeah. We do not have, I think, the consumption that, you know, would consume most of these commodities. So we effectively a net exporter. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, when it comes to that, government cannot export efficiently. Yeah. Uh, in terms of the, the appetite, you find that agriculture is probably one of the uh, risky sectors as viewed by the financial sector. So this initiative from the market demand perspective allows, I think, the Zambian financial sector to get more involved in agriculture. Yeah. And from even the political point of view, I mean, agriculture, Zambia has been trying to diversify away from the hard commodities like copper. Mm and look at agriculture. So I think this is a fantastic opportunity to get things back on track. Yeah. The now, demand is there. Yeah, but one of your big challenges, of course, is going to be education and getting the farmers to participate themselves. We do know that when these uh, uh, contracts were introduced in South Africa, pickup initially was slow, but it's grown very quickly now. You've got something like 15,000 contracts uh, moving on a day-to-day -day right. basis with more than half of those being, of course, in maize, which is uh, one of the primary commodities. Now, let's talk about your number. What are you targeting for that first quarter start uh, in terms of uh, take up and uh, 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 numbers coming out from farmers uh, trying to trade on these uh, contracts? I, I think that's rather difficult to determine at this stage. And, and this is what you've just indicated is the exact reason why we did not decide to introduce futures contracts in Zambia itself. The 
because we do realize that there are certain challenges, I think, from you know, the awareness point of view. So we thought of collaborating with a JSC, a market mm. that is well known. Mm. You will be surprised that in Zambia, the JSC is usually recent uh, in terms of pricing. So I think this is an opportunity to slowly develop um, that awareness and that interest, you know, by using a market. So in other words, participants or those that are going to invest or trade these contracts are not only Zambian. Mm. I mean, obviously, you know, through the JSC, we're hoping that other than just South Africa, mm -hmm. whoever looks at the JSC is able to participate. And then um, most of the clearing banks uh, on the JSC in terms of commodity derivatives mm -hmm. have a presence in Zambia. So that is also seen as a way of getting the local capacity developed you know, through these alliances by these banks.